He is the Fox Sports NFL rules analyst and a longtime friend because once, uh, once upon a time he was the NFL uh, VP of officiating, the head of NFL refs, and I was an NFL total access anchor, and we had a lot of great chats every single week. He is my friend from Fox Sports, Mike Pereira. How are you, Mike? You know, I'm good. I sent out a tweet this morning, and I said, I'm going on Rich Eisen's show. And I said, he wants me on, so he must have a rule proposal. Ah. Um, He always has interesting questions, but there must be a rule proposal in the back of his mind. Well, here's what I – it's not really – yeah, well, there is, obviously. But uh, it's not exactly a rules proposal. It's It's a proposal to try and fix everything at once. How does that sound? What do you think? I like that, but then if I if you fixed everything all at once, <laughs> I don't think I'd have a job. I don't, I don't want to do that. I like my job. Don't 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 make me unemployed, Rich, okay. please. But nope. go ahead, let's hear it. Understood and appreciated. Okay, so let's start. Um, let's start with targeting because it in, in, in it, it's in college football, and we see it, you know, uh, in the NFL on occasion, but. Uh, it's not nearly as stringent in, in the NFL as it is clearly in college. Why is targeting so difficult to be officiated consistently across the board, conference to conference, game to game, Mike Pereira? Well, I mean, I think that may be one of the best questions you've ever asked. Ah, because, thank you. Because it isn't consistent conference um, by conference. And in and really, it's hard because there is a gray area. And any, anything that has a gray area becomes difficult because it, it heads into that area of judgment. And, you know, targeting started out more black and white than it is now because, you know, it was just um, lower your head and hit with the crown. The crown being defined as anything above the face mask, 360 degrees around the helmet, uh, that was more black and white. But it was too punitive because... You got you got players ejected when you know the action really wasn't flagrant enough and sometimes wasn't even intentional, and so there was an uproar because and there should have been because you're taking young men and you're getting them thrown out of games and if it's in the second half of a game then he can't play in the first half of the next game, and and I for one agreed that it was too punitive and so really what they've done is kind of backed off a bit. Um, in a couple of ways. First, they said, okay, you have to confirm all elements of it. You know, there has to be the attacking motion and uh, there or a launch to go along with helmet contact. And and that was all good. um, And it helped to a degree. But now they've even gone a bit further where they say, okay, now the crown, I know what the definition is. It's above that face mask. The face mask, just above the face mask. That's 300. I know what that is, but now they said, okay, let's make the crown the crown, the tip, the top of the helmet, not the side, um, which used to be part of the crown. And so now they're almost really working to circumvent the rule to make it to make there be less calls. <laughs> and when you do that, then it's become more of a gray area type of call. And until we get a national body, that's it, which I think we're headed to get, we are, you know, yeah, I, I do think we're headed to get that. We may see it as early as the CFP, the, the playoffs this year, where one body, a body of people who are so-called experts will make all the decisions when it comes to targeting in all the playoff games it won't be an ACC replay crew here. It won't be an SEC here. Um, it won't be a Pac-12, of course, because they won't have a team in it. But, um, <laughs> you, you know, it's going to be wow. – I, I believe they'll do it this year. There'll be a national body somewhere located on the East Coast that will make all of the targeting decisions. And we may get to the point, Rich, where there'll be a central location that will work during the regular season of college football, at least in the Power Five conferences, to make those decisions. And if you do that, then to me it will be more consistent. No question about it. All right. So two things. First one, uh, was that a dog I heard in the background, Mike? Is it, is that yes, it was. Okay, um, please. I'm up in Oregon. No, that's no, okay. Um, please tell me your, your, your dog's name is Tuck. So anytime that you no, have my dog, this dog name please. is not Tuck. I will tell you, this is my please. friend Roger Ruth and my producer that yes. lives up here. And his first 
two doggies that he had up here. Yeah. Um, we're Tuck and Rule? Was that what it was? You, no? No, it was, it was, do you really want to know what their names were? Dez and he caught it? No. That sort of thing? No, or, okay, no, what, 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 okay. he caught it. What, what, are, what, no. are the, okay, what are the names of the dogs? Um, it was Sarah and Palin. <laughs> <laughs> you could you could see the you could see Russia from their doghouse is what you're saying. Yes, you can. Okay, very good. All right, and so the follow-up here is like. By the so, way, Sarah passed. No, Palin is still with us. Okay, so. well, I'm knocking on wood for for Palin. Um, so, who's in charge of this this CFP? Um, are they really going to just start something new for the most important games of the of the season? Is that well, really? they've experimented already. Okay. Uh, they did experiment. They experimented in um, maybe week one, was it? I believe it was not week zero. It was actually week one of the uh, of the college season. They experimented with a couple of different games mm-hmm. with this replay center that they set up in Pittsburgh. And so they ran a test there to see how it would work. Now, you, you can't – I don't – think they they won't be prepared i don't think and and this is by the way it's not for sure but it's a pretty strong possibility but they 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 won't be ready to handle like all the bowl games Mm -hmm. but they might in the future and um and possibly when you do that then you think okay okay we go cfp playoffs and then next year maybe we go the the, the, the all the bowl games or the next year maybe the championship games of each of the conferences um i think it will you know, it will kind of trickle down to effect where they'll be more involved. I, I think it's needed. I mean, and, and I think it's a wise idea. And the right people are involved. Steve Shaw, who is the um, basically the national coordinator of, uh, of officiating for NCAA football. Um, you know, Dean Blandino has had a hand in it because he does also work with the NCAA in replay. Mm-hmm. Um, and he was on site in Pittsburgh. So, I, I, I think it's it's a step that needs needs to be taken because there there just is too much inconsistency and 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 I, I mean I thought I had it down this year I don't in targeting I don't have it down I think I knew targeting you know when I saw targeting and this year I don't know targeting when I see targeting what I think is targeting so it, it's kind of gotten as I said back a little more gray but the powers to be recognize it and i do think we'll see a marked improvement as early as the cfp this year fox sports rules analyst mike Pereira, former head of nfl refs here on the rich eisen show mike and you just said you know targeting you you don't know what it is anymore sometimes because you think you see it and you don't and you don't see it and somebody else does and it's too arbitrary again that they've lost the plot essentially uh certainly at the collegiate level and I think that that's what's happening right now personally with ta- uh, with taunting and the emphasis on the taunting rule in the NFL, Mike, is that we've applied the sense of targeting to celebrations. You're targeting your celebration at someone and that it's, it's an interpretive uh, flag. I'm interpreting that you're targeting someone, your celebration, like, say, Darren Waller, who spikes a ball in the, in the uh, bench area on Monday Night Football, even though that's the rule, you can't spike it in a bench area. It wasn't at anybody. That was just him being all fired up that he was actually targeted by his quarterback for the first time all night. And I think we've lost the plot. What do you say about this? Mike? Well, I, I think that we're where targeting was at the beginning, where everything was targeting. And I think that's where we are a bit, although I think it's an over-exaggeration in that pretty much everything is taunting. Um, you know, you know, I think we're making a little bit too big of a deal out of it when you think of in week one, there were three calls. In week two, a spike, there was 11. In week three, there was two. And I'm not sure many how many there were in week three, but I know the one on Waller was one that, you know, to me was an overreaction by the official. Um, you know, he, he turned away. He turned away and spiked the ball. And so I, I just think that was not one that the league would want called. Look, um, you, you know, I am one to agree that Tawny has got out of hand. And, and, and when I say out of hand, what, when Tawny gets out of hand, what is it? I mean, it's the fact that games get out of control. And if you look at the last few years, most of the games got so chippy. And when, you, when they get chippy, they're so hard to control from an officiating standpoint. And I know that the league has said that these coaches are the ones that, you know, said we have to get rid of it. And that is true. But then the officiating department jumped on it, too, because 
they have had problems in the past few years controlling games. And, you know, I look at the league and say, let's go back to my day when I was in the league. And what was I was the president of the No Fun League. <laughs> um, I was the one that took away celebrations. I remember that, you Mike. go to the ground. And guys like Rich Eisen were saying, what are you doing? Correct. And um, That's right. you're taking the fun out of the game. Yep. And I'm like, okay, I don't care, but I think it provokes ill will. Well, the league is backed off, and now you can practically do anything when it comes to celebration. Um, and and so I think that's fine. Celebrate. Do what you want. You know, do cartwheels. Lay on the ground. Do anything you want to do that's not, you know, sexually suggestive, I guess, is the is the only one that you, you got to stay away from. But you know, the league is saying, hey, we, you, we, you're allowed to do this. Let's not just do it at an opponent. Let's not get in his face and taunt him after you've made a great play because it does lead to the BS that goes on after that. And and um, I, I, I just think we're making too big of a deal out of it right now because there are so few calls. This is not like an emphasis on offensive holding that created – a massive amount of holding penalties a year ago. Um, this is simply an emphasis, not a new rule, on showing up your opponent, um, celebrate, don't taunt. And, and if, if we had, if we were having 40 in a game, then I would say, yeah, we got a problem. But when, when you're looking at 3, 11, 14, 16, maybe 18 calls in four weeks, I hardly think it's a – a pandemic, so to speak. Well, um, well, and so I, I just, and, but then again, the ones that, I mean, several that I have seen called, I mean, I'm, I'm saying this isn't the intent of this. The intent was the prolonged into your face, not correct. this quick turnaround, look at a guy. So let's, let's understand that this is not what we really are looking for. Um, and and I, I think it's already begun to show that it's, it's already eased off from, just a very few to hardly any. And I understand it's a gateway celebration, right? A taunt is a gateway celebration, gateway to, to chippiness, and nobody wants Josh Norman and Odell Beckham anymore. Nobody, right. I get it. I, I, everyone understands it. But these are 15-yarders, Mike. These are game changers. These are these are drive stoppers. These are game changers, and they're unnecessary. You know what I mean? Like, And, and it gives the impression to fans that, like, you know, where it's just, why don't you make sure that the hold is proper and that the illegal contact is called or not called properly? Instead, you're like, you know, plays over and you're and you're throwing flags just for what? Like to, to show that you're the you're in charge. You know what I mean? It well, only serves to piss off players and fans when it gets yeah. when it gets missed, Mike. Well, you don't tell me you don't tell me that, that fans aren't pissed off when you miss pass interference. No, I understand that. Of the course. In the Chiefs game. Or in the Minnesota uh, game uh, that uh, they just had against Cleveland, I mean, fans get pissed off at everything, um, you know. And and I I get that they're pissed off, but those are football acts. I get that also. And this this isn't. But I, I do, you know. Just remember my past history. I was president of the No Fun League. I remember. So I, I I do think there is a bit of decorum that has to be in the game, and I don't think you should necessarily reflect. Um, poor sportsmanship by getting in somebody's face um, when you have college and high school kids that uh, that watch these games and emulate their idols, and then it always trickles down to the lower elements of the to the lower levels of the game. And so, um, and, and again, Rich, if we were having a ton of these, I would say we may have an issue and more of a talking point here. But it's 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 to me it's there's not that many the initial um, reaction in week two when they didn't call a couple in week one and they were told then the reaction was okay well we got the word we got to call these and then they overreacted and then they settled back down and I just don't think that it's going to be something it's always the same we talk about something and a point of emphasis for the first four weeks. And then basically we're not talking about it in week 11. And okay. I think that's going to be the same with the taunt. I hope so. Last one for you on this one, and then we'll, 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 we'll end with the, uh, the universal fix. Um, that I remember when the celebrations in the end zone and everywhere else were outlawed. And I remember it was the owner's meeting, the uh, membership meeting in Tampa, Florida. And I remember going up to you in the lobby. I remember exactly where I saw you. 
and I told you that this is a big mistake. And I remember the look you gave me, and you always would give me this look, and the look was interpretive. It's like, Rich, I get so much from the commissioner and the owners and the coaches. I don't need it from you. Literally is like, kind of like the look that you gave me. And you're laughing because you, I know that you know that look. And, and you told yeah, me right. you told me that there were letters from coaches at the high school and Pop Warner level asking the NFL, please do something because the kids are doing it. And you right. said that that's part of the reason why we're doing this. Do you think, do you know, was that the same thing with the taunting? Like, where did this come from, the taunting emphasis, um, Mike? Where did it come well, from? Well, I, I, I honestly don't know where it originated. You know, they're saying that the coaches subcommittee, which, uh, you know, they've listed the names, Tomlin and, and, and a lot of the other coaches, um, you know, Harbaugh, the, that it came from them. I don't know exactly where it came from, um, but but I do know that there's been kind of a groundswell with um, the feeling within the league that it had gotten out of hand, and 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 I'm sure that the officiating department had a, a part of this. But then it goes to the nine member competition committee, and and I you know obviously it's a different committee with the exception of some back in my day. I mean John Mara and Rich McKay are still involved, and. And, and there wasn't a lot of stomach even for it back then, but then it was more celebration than taunting. But um, I, I, I can't say where it came from. They say that it came from the coaches subcommittee. Mm-hmm. Okay, I, I believe that. But, um, you know, I, I don't know how many letters that come from, you know, high school coaches, but I do know this, that they do work with the college conferences and um, and they, they have joint meetings together their rules committees meet together and and i i know college has always been sensitive to the fact that the nfl allows so much more in unsportsmanlike conduct my god god forbid if we got to the college game where if you the high stepped into the end zone from the five yard line if you high stepped into the end zone out in front of somebody you would be penalized for that from the spot of the foul the five yard line and they take away the score so it's not nearly as dramatic as, as as at the lower levels, but I'm sure that they had some input in that too when they discussed this, and they bet these points of emphasis with with uh, all these different committees, and and um, I, I don't know. Again, I'm hopeful at least that when you call me in week eleven, okay, you're going to be talking about. Um, you're going to be talking about, uh, let's see, it'll be about the difference between illegal contact okay. and, and defensive holding and why the hell in a third mm. 27 is it an automatic first down. That's okay. ludicrous. I will make a note of that for our Week 11 chat. Uh, last one for you, Mike. Uh, Mike Pereira, NFL on Fox Rules Analyst here on the Rich Eyes Show, former head of NFL refs. Uh, there was a play also in Monday Night Football where uh, Hunter Renfro was taken down by the front, by his breastplate in the front, which is not a horse collar because it wasn't from the back. Uh, It was from the front, and it looked like maybe the guy grabbed his face mask and a face mask penalty was called on review. You're looking at it. He didn't even come close, the face mask, okay? Why can't 345 Park buzz in and say you got that wrong? Pick up the flag. It, what 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 is Hawkeye? You're hearing about Hawkeye fans. You're hearing about Hawkeye. <laughs> what what is what is happening? And why can't why can't the the Central NFL say we're seeing it's terribly wrong? You're so wrong on this sort of stuff. Why they can't call we do this? Hawkeye because the NFL 345 is a mass unit. I Maybe that's know. what it is. Could be that um, Pierce. Could be that somebody from Iowa. I don't know. I don't get it. But it's okay. <laughs> you, you know. Listen, they're taking steps. Now, first of all, I thought that was a foul. <laughs> you did. You know, that was from the front. It was a breastplate. No, it was the side. It was the side. It wasn't the back. It was the side. And you can't grab inside the collar. But they the didn't call that. Holder. They called and face they mask. Call that. They called the face mask. So I think it was a foul for another reason. But, um, you know, listen, what are we doing? We're talking about the sky judge. We're back to that conversation. Yes, that's Did it. get the fix-all guy, which – which you and I, we have been a proponent of. Mm-hmm. And I think it would work, and I think it's the most dramatic step that would be taken in the history of officiating that it could change things to a far greater degree than any point of emphasis or any rule change. Um, if you want to go that step, we have said, you've agreed, put an eighth official in a booth, give them the TV monitors, and go. let them take a look, and, and, and let them correct some things. So the league said, no, we don't want that. But We'll we'll let the replay guy, we'll call him the video assistant, and we'll let him make some decisions. 
and we'll make them, let them make some decisions in real time. Mm-hmm. And so, for example, we've had several plays already this year where there's a sideline catch, and, and the officials come together, and they're, like, talking, and the video assistant slash replay official sees that it was clearly incomplete, and they've called it complete. He just says it's com- incomplete. It's incomplete. I got the shot. So they make the change. Boom. Right then. They make the change. Um, a, a guy that's, that's and we don't know, and we at home have no idea that somebody got in we somebody's ear. We have no idea. We have no idea. It's it's it, it's called video assistance, and so they're getting the calls right, right, um, without stopping the game and having a challenge to be made or something like that. It's going to save time. and it's going to correct some errors. It's not that's not called our favorite sky judge. But he's doing somewhat the same, right? And then now it involves lines, ground, and planes. So it's not to the area yet where it involves personal fouls, like hits on quarterbacks, which to me are up a little bit this year. And I think the needle has gotten kind of a little too far in protection. But it's not in those areas yet. And then they have what's called an expedited review, which is another use, I think, of replay in a good way. So the expedited review is if they see a play and there is a play where the call on the field is wrong and that let's say it was a turnover. So it's the responsibility of replay and they see it. They just go, they just announce um, after review the, the ruling on the field is the runners down at the one. What? After review, you never went to the sideline. You never looked at the monitor. So an expedited review. So instead of taking that horrendous two and a half to three minutes, which allows me time to go on the air, they cut me off <laughs> and they're doing these expedited reviews. <laughs> it is a game. And, and so yes. it's like, so, yes. so that's yes. progress. That's progress in my mind. Um, <laughs> and, and, you know, and, and under Walt Anderson and Perry Fuel, I, I think it's working. And so they're finding that they can, take steps in real time to make some corrections off, off, you know, on the field. So will that expand? Well, let's look at history. In 1999, we brought replay in, and it was just about ground lines and playing. But now it's in judgment calls. And did he have the ball long enough? And right. Was it recovered in the continuing action? Um, they'll, they'll grow with this. And, and maybe that growth, that video assistant, will become that, God forbid, that that sky judge <laughs> who can be involved in all the decisions. So I, I applaud the league for at least taking this first step on the way to satisfying Rich Eisen <laughs> and even the former vice president, no, the former president of the No Fun League. That's it, uh, Mike, Mike Carrera. Carrera. Very good. And, and speaking of just growth, Mike, you saying, you know, hey, something that's been advanced in the NFL that causes you to have less uh, uh, screen time, that's that's also growth, I think, from you. Well done. It's growth. It's I'll growth. do more fishing. I won't be on the air. <laughs> uh, I assume you're heading to Seattle for Thursday night, the first uh, triple I cast am. game of the year. Okay. I, I look forward I to it. Definitely what a am. game that's going to be tomorrow night. Oh, my gosh. I can't yeah, wait. it's going to be a great game. I'm looking forward to that. And then I'll shoot over to Dallas and see the Dallas and, and the Giants play on Sunday. Fantastic. So. I look forward to hearing you. Uh, I always love watching you and just uh, chatting with you. Thanks for the call, Mike. Appreciate it. You got it, my friend. Take care. That is Mike Pereira, Fox Sports NFL rules analyst former VP of officiating and former president of the No Fun League right here on The Rich Eisen Show. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.